the stars are right, and that means it's time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I'm your host, the man from Lang. Thank you very much for joining me today. On this episode, I am reviewing the Rogue cards from The Forgotten Age, the third deluxe expansion for the Arkham Horror LCG. There are spoilers throughout if you care about that sort of thing. If you uh, enjoy what you hear, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Without further ado, let's get started. The uh, first rogue card in the box is Treasure Hunter. It's a one-cost asset that costs one experience point. It has an intellect skill icon, the ally and wayfarer traits, and it will take up the ally slot. It has the game text, you get plus one intellect. Forced at the end of the upkeep phase, you must either pay one resource or discard Treasure Hunter. Treasure Hunter has two health and two sanity. Treasure Hunter is the uh, intellect variant of Hired Muscle, a non-unique ally that was released in the Dunwich Legacy Deluxe Expansion. Hired Muscle uh, didn't exactly set the world on fire when it was released, and uh, I don't really expect Treasure Hunter to either. Of the uh, hundreds and hundreds of decks posted over at uh, Arkham DB, there are less than 10 that include a copy of uh, Hired Muscle. And uh, most of those decks happen to be built around Jenny Barnes, since, uh, not surprisingly, she's the only investigator who can really consistently generate enough resources to pay uh, Hired Muscle's upkeep cost. Uh, static skill boosts are good, but spending one resource a turn for plus one combat, whether you happen to need it or not, is a uh, fairly high price to pay. Treasure Hunter is uh, saddled with the same upkeep cost, uh, as Hired Muscle, which means it's unlikely uh, to see much play in my rogue decks. Plus one Intellect is uh, better than plus one Combat, since Intellect helps you uh, gather gather clues, which uh, typically brings you uh, closer to achieving your win condition. That said, uh, outside a few effects and uh, scenarios and treachery cards that force you to investigate with Intellect, rogues are probably better off purchasing lockpicks which uh, cost the same amount of experience points as tre Treasure Hunter, but provide a much uh, greater bonus during investigate actions. Treasure Hunter also happens to be in the same class as uh, Leo DeLuca, who is really going to be the first choice of uh, most rogue players. Treasure Hunter and uh, Hired Muscle may see more play uh, in one particular deck, that being the new uh, Guardian Investigator Leo Anderson, Anderson's off-class is Rogue, and he may play an ally asset, reducing its cost by one after his turn begins. Anderson could play Hired Muscle or Treasure Hunter for free, which is uh, certainly a lot better than the alternative. And uh, Treasure Hunter is uh, certainly going to be an interesting option in Leo uh, to help shore up his uh, otherwise uh, unspectacular intellect. Anderson's uh, signature card, Mitch Brown, gives him two additional ally slots for non-unique allies, and uh, there are only a handful of those uh, at the moment. Besides Hired Muscle and Treasure Hunter, there is uh, Beat Cop, Cat Burglar, Guard Dog, and Venturer. If uh, Ander Anderson uh, disposes of his allies as quickly as previous exp expeditions, Hired Muscle and uh, Treasure Hunter are unlikely to remain on the table for long, which uh, makes their upkeep cost a lot easier to swallow. The uh, cost curve of Guardian decks tends to be quite high, though, which uh, means it's unlikely a Guardian deck can afford to pay the upkeep cost of a card like Treasure Hunter or Hired Muscle for long, unless it uh, has a very solid uh, plan to generate extra resources. I thought for a moment that you uh, might be able to play Hired Muscle and Treasure Hunter in combination with another rogue card in this pack, the uh, Decorated Skull, to draw cards and generate resources. Unfortunately, the Decorated Skull only triggers if an ally is defeated, not discarded, so you're going to have to find a way to kill off the Hired Muscle or Treasure Hunter if you, if you want to get to that type of engine working. Honestly, I'm, I'm not a big fan of uh, Treasure Hunter. There are uh, far better allies available in the Rogue class, and if you need help investigating, lockpicks are a uh, much better investment in my opinion. I'm sure there will be uh, several Leo Anderson decks that experiment with Treasure Hunter and Hired Muscle since Leo can play them for free, mitigating their upkeep cost for a turn. If Leo plays them in combination with the Decorated Skull, he can play them for free and get a card and a resource back uh, when they die, which is, uh, that's pretty good. 
That said, if uh, Leo Anderson receives a solid uh, non-unique ally or two this cycle, I think Treasure Hunter's stock uh, could drop significantly and uh, he will simply not be able to make the cut uh, in a Leo Anderson deck either. The second rogue card in this box is Decorated Skull, Doom Begets Doom. It's a free asset with an agility skill icon and the item Relic and Cursed Traits. It takes up an accessory slot and uses zero charges. It has the response, after an investigator, ally, asset, or enemy at your location is defeated, place one resource from the token bank on Decorated Skull as a charge. You may take an additional, you may take an action and spend a charge to draw one card and gain one resource. Death is a, it's a fact of life in the Arkham Horror LCG, and uh, the Decorated Skull gives players a chance to, uh, to capitalize on it. It uh, takes an action to put the Decorated Skull into play, and it enters play with zero charges, which uh, isn't great. However, if you can uh, place enough d charges on the Decorated Skull, you've got, and you've got the actions to spare, you can uh, quickly refill your hand and resource pool simultaneously, which I think is quite strong. As I mentioned earlier, the uh, Decorated Skull enters play with zero charges, so uh, someone or something needs to die before uh, you can use it. There are three ways to add charges. First is when a, uh, an, an investigator is defeated at your location. While I love this uh, from a, thema a thematic point of view, it uh, works only in multiplayer, and uh, even then an investigator going down to defeat should happen rarely, uh, if at all. If investigators are dying, that uh, probably means that you're losing the scenario and uh, no amount of charges on Decorated Skull are going to save you at that point. If uh, you find yourself placing a lot of charges on the Decorated Skull because investigators are being defeated, you should uh, probably reevaluate uh, your entire strategy. You uh, may also add charges to the Skull when uh, an ally asset at your location is defeated. I don't think you're going to generate many charges this way unless you or another investigator on your team is playing a lot of cheap disposable allies. If you're playing a rogue, for example, uh, you're probably playing Leo DeLuca and most players would move heaven and earth to, uh, to keep him in play as long as possible. However, if you're playing Leo Anderson and a bunch of disposable non-unique allies on your team, or your team, uh, or you team up with a seeker who has a penchant for throwing art students to the ghouls, you should be able to generate uh, a few charges with Decorated uh, Skull this way. Defeating enemies is the third way to add a charge to, to the Skull, and I suspect this is going to be the uh, primary source of charges. If you're uh, playing an offensive-minded investigator who is responsible for keeping enemies in check, the Skull will generate more value uh, when you need to take an action to draw a card or gain a resource after you've been uh, battling for a while. There are uh, quite a few investigators besides rogues who can uh, take advantage of the decorated skull, but uh, some can use it more effectively than others. Leo Anderson is probably in the best position to use it because he can generate charges by sacrificing allies and defeating enemies. I'd be tempted to uh, try the decorated skull in a Zoe Samaras deck to, uh, to gain resources by engaging enemies and killing them, However, the, uh, the Decorated Skull does compete for the accessory slot uh, with Zoe's Cross. Ursula Downs can uh, take the Decorated Skull because it's a relic. However, I don't think she can leverage it quite as well as Leo. The uh, Ursula decks that I've seen tend to play either her signature asset, uh, Jake Williams, or Dr. Mylan Christopher, neither of which I would consider particularly disposable and uh, defeating enemies is going to be very difficult for an investigator with a uh, combat skill value of one and really no uh, really and she doesn't have any many uh, good combat options either so I don't expect to see the decorated skull in many uh, Ursula decks. Another interesting possibility is uh, for the de for the uh, decorated skull is in uh, Akachi Onyele. She can put the uh, the decorated skull uh, you can put the Decorated Skull in an Akachi deck because it uh, uses charges. Better yet, uh, the Decorated Skull enters play with uh, one charge due to uh, Akachi's ability. Akachi even has the option of adding charges to it whenever she draws an Elder Sign. Akachi uh, certainly has the tools like Shriveling that she can use to take down enemies. 
She uh, also uses allies such as the uh, Arcane Initiate or David Renfield, who uh, tend to die rather quickly once they have uh, served their purpose. The Decorated Skull is a uh, very cool relic that opens up uh, some interesting deck building opportunities for several investigators. It's a little slow since you uh, do need to power it up before you can use it, and it takes an action to trigger. And uh, that uh, ladder reservation has more to do with my play style than the, uh, the card, though. If I'm playing an aggressive deck, I tend to draw cards or gain resources as a last resort. That said, if you uh, trigger the skull once, it basically pays for itself, which is really all you can ask for from a level zero card. If you've got the action, uh, the charges and actions to spare, you could use the skull to quickly replenish your hand and resource pool, which is uh, really quite good. I uh, suspect the decorated skull is better in multiplayer than solo, both because there are more opportunities to add charges and you have uh, a little bit more flexibility to trigger it. I find in multiplayer, the uh, time is not as pressing, so you do have those, those free actions sometimes that you can use to trigger the skull. If I was playing the uh, decorated skull in solo, I'd probably want to, to pair it up with an ally like Leo DeLuca to ensure I had the, uh, the extra actions available to, uh, to be able to take advantage of it. The third rogue card in the box is a new event. This is Eavesdrop. It costs one resource and comes with an intellect and agility skill icons. It has the insight and trick traits and the game text choose an unengaged enemy at your location. Test intellect X, where X is the evade value of the chosen enemy. If you succeed, discover two clues at your location. Gathering clues has uh, never really been the strong suit of the rogue class, although the situation has improved a lot since the days of the core set. Streetwise, uh, a permanent asset that was released in the Blood on the Altar expansion, and uh, Lockpicks, a rogue asset released in the Path to Carcosa Deluxe expansion, have uh, done wonders for the class. However, both cards uh, have limitations. For starters, both cards cost experience points, which uh, doesn't really help you an investigator setting out on a campaign. And uh, Streetwise can be quite uh, resource intensive to, uh, to operate because you do have to spend those two resources to get that plus three intellect bonus while uh, lockpicks re requires you to exhaust it, which means you, uh, in order to use it, you need to, uh, you can only use it once per turn unless you have two copies on the table. And uh, it's worth noting that both cards will also only net you uh, one clue per investigate action. Eavesdrop is a uh, tempting card to include in your uh, rogue decks because it does let you discover two clues uh, with one action, which seems like a nice tempo boost However, I'm really not crazy about this card for, for three reasons. Eavesdrop has a very high opportunity cost. It uh, usually requires at least one action to set up, mitigating that tempo boost you gain from discovering the two clues. And it requires you to pass an intellect skill test, which isn't very easy uh, for most rogues to do without uh, committing additional cards and resources. Let's take a look at uh, these problems one by one. First up is uh, eavesdrops, eavesdrops opportunity cost. If you want to play eavesdrop, you, uh, you need to have an enemy at your location. That's uh, easier said than done because there are a lot of variables at work, including whether you're playing solo or multiplayer, the, uh, the nature of the scenario, and even the nature of the enemy itself. You uh, don't just want any old enemy either. You want the right enemy. And by uh, right enemy, I mean... Uh, an enemy with a relatively low evade value that uh, won't come back to bite you in the ass if you happen to leave it in play for a turn or two. There are a few enemies in the core set uh, that meet those criteria. However, uh, many of those enemies don't appear uh, frequently in scenarios. Many of the enemies uh, in the core set that do appear frequently are really better off dead. Acolytes and uh, the Wizard of the Order are dangerous because uh, they increase the amount of doom in play themselves and you're leaving yourself open to uh, mysterious chanting, which can really light a fire under the uh, agenda deck. Swarm of Rats also uh, crop up fre frequently, but I, I can't really imagine trying to evade them just uh, in order to play eavesdrop. That brings us to problem number two. It's uh, not enough just to have an enemy at your location. That un enemy must also be unengaged. The uh, easiest way to ensure an enemy is unengaged is to uh, evade it. 
which uh, typically requires an action. If you or someone in your group needs to take an action to evade an enemy first, you're not gaining much in the way of tempo by playing eavesdrop. Chances are you're just better off avoiding the enemy altogether and simply taking two investigate actions. The enemy could also be aloof, uh, but that brings us to our third problem. If there is a suitable unengaged enemy at your location, you will still need to pass an intellect skill test, which isn't exactly the rogue's forte. Skids, Jenny, Lola, and Wendy have an intellect skill value of 3, while Safina has a 2. The average evade value on enemies in the core set is somewhere between 2 and 3, so there is no guarantee that you'll discover two clues at your location even if you've met all of the above criteria I've listed above. You uh, probably need to, uh, to commit the resources to pass the intellect skill test, which also impacts your tempo, so be prepared. Now I can see certain situations where a card like eavesdrop would be useful. If you're playing the uh, Midnight Masks, for example, you'd, be, uh, you'd much rather have to take an intellect skill, uh, an intellect 1 skill test against a Hunting Night Gaunt than an intellect 4 skill test at a High Shroud location such as uh, Miskatonic University or Downtown. However, these types of situations are rare and uh, difficult to set up, and until you do, eavesdrop is sitting in your hand doing nothing. While I'm uh, not crazy about playing eavesdrop in most rogue builds, the uh, card is a better fit in Finn Edwards. Finn can't guarantee the right enemy is on the table, but uh, he does get to take an additional action each turn as long as... Uh, as long as it's an evade action, which solves one of the problems with eavesdrop. Finn also has an intellect skill value of 4, which solves another problem. If uh, Finn doesn't want to waste time evading enemies, he could uh, play hiding spot on a location to make them aloof. Finn can then, uh, he can also play card, a card like uh, Anatomical Diagrams, a seeker event from the Echoes of the Past that can uh, reduce an enemy's evade value by 2 until the end of the round. If uh, Finn plays anatomical diagrams at the start of his turn, its bonus will apply during the evade action's agility test and eavesdrop's intellect skill test, which is some nice synergy. Finn needs to have at least 5 sanity remaining to play anatomical diagrams though, which uh, may be difficult for him considering his pathetic willpower skill value of uh, 1. That said, uh, Finn can also use cards like Deduction and uh, Look What I Found to gather clues, and using either of those cards is uh, a lot more straightforward than uh, mucking about with a card uh, like Eavesdrop. While I love the, uh, the fact that Eavesdrop lets you, lets you discover uh, two clues with one action, there are a lot of things that have to fall into place before that can happen. Ultimately, I think eavesdrop's opportunity cost is simply too high to pay for most rogues. A uh, level 0 rogue can struggle to gather clues, but it's probably faster for them to just take a bunch of investigate actions rather than try to maneuver into position to play eavesdrop. I could certainly see taking the card for a spin in uh, a Finn Edwards deck, but I suspect that once Finn gains some experience, eavesdrop is going to get cut in, in favor of uh, stronger cards. And that's a bit of a shame, because uh, I do like the card uh, from a thematic perspective. The uh, last rogue card in the box is You Handle This One. It's a free event with intellect and agility skill icons and the trick trait. It has the game text fast. Play after you draw a non peril encounter card, but before resolving that card's effect. Choose another investigator. That investigator is considered to have drawn that encounter card. Instead, gain one resource. I discussed this card uh, briefly during my review of uh, Sharon Zobel from the Dim Carcosa Mythos pack, and uh, I'm still in love with this card. During the, uh, the Path to Carcosa cycle, each uh, class received a thematic way to counter the encounter deck. Seekers, Mystics, and Survivors received a way uh, to cancel treacheries with Forewarned, Level 2 Ward of Protection, and a Test of Will, respectively. Guardians, on the other hand, received a way to avoid drawing a treachery in the uh, form of On the Hunt. Rogues had to wait until the, uh, the Forgotten Age to receive their answer to the encounter deck, but the, uh, the card is brilliant from a thematic perspective. Rogues are a self-centered bunch who put their health and safety above that of their companions, so it certainly make, it uh, makes perfect sense that their answer to the encounter deck is to let someone else deal with their problems. 
The card even re re rewards rogues for uh, with a resource for behaving selfishly, and uh, I really love that. The other thing I love about this card is its versatility. Uh, you handle this one can target a non-peril treachery or enemy, not just a treachery, which uh, that makes this uh, card useful in a wide range of roguish investigators. If you're playing a rogue with a low willpower, such as Schizo Tool or Finn Edwards, this card is a, is a great answer to uh, to Rotting Remains. It also gives you a convenient way to offload uh, Frozen in Fear to an investigator who is better equipped to deal with it. If you're playing Leo Anderson, you handle this one. Is uh, really your answer to treacheries that force you to to make agility tests, such as uh, Grasping Hands or uh, On Wings of Darkness. If you're playing a rogue or an off-class rogue that's uh, ill-equipped to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Mythos, say a support-minded Safina Rousseau deck or a stealthy Wendy Adams, you can uh, send the, the enemies into the uh, waiting arms of the Guardian. And if you uh, just want to be a dick and uh, grief your fellow Guardians, you can do that too. The, uh, the options are really limitless uh, with this card. Beating scenarios in the Arkham Horror LCG requires the uh, the right deck, some skill, and a little bit of luck. It helps a great deal if you've got some way to counter the cards that are coming off the top of the encounter deck during the Mythos phase. You handle this one may not let a rogue investigator cancel those cards outright like a seeker, mystic, or survivor, but it does allow him or her to pass that encounter card to an investigator who is better equipped to uh, better equipped to deal with it. My only knock against this card is that it's only good in multiplayer. As someone who has a, a soft spot for rogues, I'm looking forward to seeing whether the, uh, the class will receive an answer to the encounter deck that is uh, useful in solo play as well. Here's hoping the, the uh, answer is as thematic as you, you handle this one. Who knows, maybe rogues can uh, put all of those resources they've got to, to good use and bribe the encounter deck uh, not to hurt them. Those are the uh, rogue cards in the Forgotten Age. It's a bit of a mixed bag uh, for rogues in this expansion. Decorated Skull is a fun little card that's, uh, that's going to be interesting to build around. If an investigator is spending a lot of cards and resources taking down enemies, the Skull is a, is a really good way to replenish their hand and resource pool so they can keep on fighting. You Handle This One uh, gives rogues a very thematic way of interacting with the encounter deck. I love the fact that it can target uh, treacheries or enemies, depending uh, on the investigator. I'm uh, Unfortunately, I'm much less enthusiastic about Treasure Hunter and Eavesdrop. Treasure Hunter is, is going to struggle to find a home in, in Dex because, uh, you know, a rogue ally with the name of Leo DeLuca exists, and he's awfully uh, difficult to bump off his throne as the number one rogue ally. The uh, cards with upkeep costs, the card has an upkeep cost, and uh, the fact that cards like lockpicks exist also are, are a couple strikes against it. Eavesdrop, uh, eavesdrop uh, may see some play in a Finn Edwards deck, but uh, I think its opportunity cost is simply way too high in most cases. Finn is uh, much better off playing deduction, which basically accomplishes the, uh, the same thing for a lot less setup. Little, di little bit disappointed in uh, in the rogues, uh, in the rogue cards in this box. But uh, we've got a whole cycle ahead of us, so we'll uh, we'll see if they can't get some better cards here in the future. That's going to do it for my review. If you enjoyed what you hear, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. If you'd like to contact me, I can be reached at manfromleng at gmail dot com. I'm also on Twitter at manfromleng. Until the stars are right, keep your shotgun close and your elder sign closer. Take care out there, and happy investigating.